back to the channel and welcome to episode 46. Today we're going to review a product that some people might find shocking. All right, well, color me intrigued. And I know you love puns, Bruce, so are you actually going to tell us what this electrifying item actually is? Nice choice of words, Keith. We're going to take a look at the Leviton Smart Lock Pro GFCI, or Ground Fault Circuit Interrupt, outlet. Ha! I knew it. I knew it would be something just like that. You're, you're getting predictable, old man. Wow, where's this coming from? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I guess I've been watching too many shows with uh, adversary and nemesis type of relationships. Oh, you mean like Phineas and Ferb? No, like I've ever watched that show. Okay, right. Aren't you a little old for fibs, Keith? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes, I am. I knew it! Ah, oh, damn it. I was so close to getting away with it, too. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. It's okay, Keith. You know, you had kids the proper age that that show would have and could have been on with them there. So that could be your cover story. That's, that's the story I'd stick with. Yeah, good point. You know, uh... No one has to be the wiser. It's not like I would turn on that TV show and watch it today. Exactly. None of us ever do. All right. So I'm going to ask a seemingly stupid question here, but here goes. Why are we reviewing something as mundane, although important, uh, but a rather mundane product such as a GFCI outlet? We're going to break into this episode for just a brief moment with some very exciting news. Well, yeah, exciting for our viewers who actually like to wear shirts. Ah, good point, Keith. So for those of you that are our shirtless viewers, please feel free to skip over this portion of the video. And for those who do like wearing shirts, not like Nessa, but for those who do, we will be giving away 10 of these luxurious Dad's Talk Tech logo t-shirts. That's right. So 30 days after we hit 1,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away 10 of these shirts to people that have subscribed to the channel. Now, unfortunately, because of shipping complexities, we are going to have to restrict the winners to those of you that live in North America, you know, the U.S. and Canada. So if you haven't subscribed already, do so right now, and that will allow us to get to business and start shipping out these free t-shirts. Now, back to our regular scheduled episode. Great question, Keith. So over the summer, we had a bit of a power event, and it actually tripped the GFCI outlet that is on the same circuit as our freezer. We had no reason to be in our garage where the freezer is located for over 24 hours. So when we did go out to the freezer to try and retrieve something like ice cream from it, we had a very unpleasant surprise waiting for us. Oh yeah, I can only imagine. Oof. So, but how is a different GFCI outlet gonna solve that problem. Another excellent question, Keith. So this particular GFCI outlet has an audible alarm integrated in. So if the breaker interrupts the circuit, it's actually going to set off an audible alarm so that we are made aware that we have a power loss at the outlet the freezer is connected to. Okay, so this is starting to make some sense. Uh, but uh, what if you don't go to your garage? Well, in our case, the outlet the freezer is connected to is attached to a GFCI outlet that is actually in the house in our laundry area pass-through. So when you come in the back door, you go through our laundry area, that is where the GFCI outlet is located that is on the circuit that our freezer connects to. So in our instance, we'll actually hear the alarm going off in the house without ever having to go out to the garage. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I gotta be honest, I didn't even know that they made GFCI outlets that had an integrated uh, audible alarm like that. Are they, um, are they expensive? No, not really. And um, compared to the cost of the food that we lost, uh, really not expensive. Um, I'm actually gonna put an affiliate link in the description below. So if you're interested in one of these outlets, you can uh, go get one and uh, help the channel at the same time. Okay, this is good. Sorry, I have so many questions. I have another question. So these GFCI outlets are located at the, at the outlet position. What if the breaker in your breaker box, like in your basement, 
trips. Does that sound the alarm? How does that work? Very insightful question, Keith. So the answer is no. If you lose the breaker, you will not get an audible alarm. This is really only if the conditions that would trip the GFCI to interrupt that circuit, that it's going to uh, give you that audible alarm. But I do have another trick up my sleeve. Oh, really? Do you now? Do tell, do tell. So in the garage, I have the freezer connected to a UPS. So it really is designed to, uh, you know, give us some extra runtime if we do lose power, but that UPS device, if it loses power for whatever reason, whether it be for the breaker at the panel, overall power in general, or just the GFCI uh, tripping, it's going to set off an audible alarm as well. Now, if I really wanted to, uh, to go that extra level, what I would probably do is put in an alarm on the outlet in the house, uh, that GFCI outlet, put an alarm that would sound if power is lost for any reason. Uh, and that would include the, uh, the breaker uh, and the panel or overall loss of power. I have not gone to that step. Those actually are surprisingly expensive uh, compared to even the uh, outlet itself. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess a dedicated power failure alarm uh, probably would be expensive, I guess, compared to the solutions that we're talking about. Um, you know, here in Michigan, at least in my neighborhood anyway, we have a lot of detached garages, and even if it's attached, I, I would imagine that having a GFCI outlet in the house uh, on the same circuit upstream of outlets in the garage is probably a fairly rare scenario. Am I wrong? It's good that you have it, but... Yeah, I don't know if that's common or not. All I know is that's, uh, you know, how they ended up wiring it when the house was built. The interesting thing is I have two other GFCI outlets in the garage. Now we have a four car attached garage. There's two other GFCI outlets. So not sure how that circuit got split, uh, some in the house, some in the garage, but that's the way they did it. Yeah, that's a bit strange, but uh, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Exactly. Yeah, so I feel like this could really be a pretty short review overall, right? I mean, as long as the unit does what it's supposed to do, right, which it's uh, a GFCI, so as long as it trips uh, when there's a power overload or a power shortage or fluctuation, if it trips, it trips. Uh, or if, it, in your case, if it sounds an alarm also when it does that, um, yeah, it either works or it doesn't work, right? I was thinking the very same thing, Keith. So I can show you a video of the alarm tripping when the uh, device is tested and that's the best way for me to do it. I don't want to, you know, create a situation where there's a short and, and do it the, uh, you know, the legitimate way. Uh, but there is a test button on it and that'll simulate the, the fact that the uh, GFCI has been triggered and uh, we, can, we can show that video so that everyone can see that it works. After that, that's, that's really all I was looking for, right? Is something in the house so that I would know when I lost power on that outlet so that if uh, the, I needed to go reset that uh, GFCI outlet, I could do so in a short period of time. The UPS in the garage keeps the freezer running for a short period of time until I do so, um, just for that extra uh, you know, measure of safety. Now installing one of these, I do recommend that you shut off the power uh, so that uh, you, know, you don't get yourself uh, electrocuted, which you know, you'd find shocking. Um, and then if you're not comfortable dealing with uh, you know, doing the wiring yourself, then uh, you know, I would recommend that you contact a licensed electrician. They can put that in, should be a huge charge uh, to get that done. And other than that, I think everything about this is, is really fairly self-explanatory. When I restored power to that breaker, this is uh, what I got. So let's try the reset. Okay, and that uh, stopped it from beeping. We now have a green light showing that our status is good. Let's do the test again. So this is the sound that we're going to get if we have a GFI event. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're somewhere in the house where we can hear this. This is in our laundry room, which is attached to our kitchen which is attached to our family room and dining room. So if we're on the main level of the house, I think we're gonna hear this. I think if you're not in a bedroom with the door shut, I think you're actually gonna be able to hear that as well. So let's go ahead and reset this, get it pushed into the wall and call her good. Yeah, agreed. And if you, our viewers agree, how about giving us a thumbs up? Just do it. You're still here. You're actually listening to the words coming out of our mouths. Precisely. And that probably means you liked the video and the channel, or right before you started watching this, you'd ordered a footlong and started eating it, and you didn't really want to put it down in fear that the dog would eat it. 
and therefore you just suffered through the whole time. So thanks for joining us today and possibly being a slow footlong eater. You'll see me, Bruce, and my partner in crime, Keith, on the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.